people, mainly British citizens of Pakistani origin, have been arrested. And the sad truth is that all of us will make the understandable connection. But the one thing that there isn't, even after this terrible announcement, is a sense of national panic. Now, don't get me wrong, we take the threat as seriously as anyone, and we have great faith in our police and security services. But there's no question of Britain grinding to a halt. London subway is functioning sweatily, as it always has, with no greater police presence apparent than usual. The streets here are still full, and as you can see, well, this park has the usual number of Britons desperately looking for the last of the summer sunshine. Maybe this is because, in some sense, we've been here before. There are millions of Britons who remember the air raids of the Second World War, and many more who recall living through the murderous attacks on our cities by the IRA in the 1970s and 80s. But maybe, whilst we completely accept what we've been told about the events of the last 24 hours, there's been an odd coincidence. Just two days ago, our Homeland Security Secretary made a highly spun speech hinting that new anti-terror laws are on the way and that those who disagree with further limitations by this government on our freedom just don't get it. Of course, he knew about the story that was about to break and of course he knew about the threat to our safety and security that the police were about to reveal. And he couldn't resist using that knowledge so that a few hours later he'd be able to say, I told you so. It's cynicism like that that makes this one of the most untrusted governments we've ever had, even at a time like this. This is Simon Bates for CBS News in London. Thanks for joining us this half hour. This is CBS News up to the minute. For news 24 hours a day, log on to cbsnews.com. Experience CBS News. Now on CBS News, up to the minute. This nation is at war with Islamic fascists. The search is on for more suspects in a plot to blow up as many as 10 American jetliners. No lotions, nothing liquid. And there's now a whole new set of security rules at the nation's airports. From CBS News headquarters in New York, this is Up to the Minute. Good morning, I'm Meg Oliver. The search continues this morning in London for more suspects in a spectacular plot to blow up American jetliners over the Atlantic. We think this was an extraordinarily serious plot and we are confident we've prevented uh, an attempt to commit mass, mass murder, as I've said, on an unimaginable scale. At least 24 suspects are now in custody, most of them British-born, many of Pakistani descent. The youngest is just 17. More arrests are expected. British authorities move quickly after learning the plotters hope to stage a dry run within two days. CBS's Jim Stewart has details. U.S. counterterrorism officials say the London plotters were as close as a matter of days and no more than two weeks away from launching their suicide attacks when Scotland Yard began rounding them up. They had also collected all the essential elements for their bombs, and they had picked their targets of their transatlantic terror plot. The attacks were planned against commercial flights on U.S. airlines, leaving within about an hour of each other for the most popular American tourist cities. Direct from Heathrow Airport in London to New York, Washington, Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Boston. Somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean, investigators say, the martyrs plan to simultaneously explode small chemical bombs made from ingredients in their carry-on luggage. I would say that this plot was well advanced. Uh, in other words, they had accumulated and assembled the capabilities that they needed, and they were in the uh, final stages of planning before execution. Investigators say the ready-to-mix peroxide-based bombs were essentially the same devices used in the London subway and bus attacks last year, only with the components in separate bottles to avoid suspicion at airport security. One of the explosive elements was described as similar to that found in the sole of a shoe worn by Al-Qaeda operative Richard Reed, who tried to take down a plane in December 2001. When the FBI exploded a mock-up of that shoe, it proved more than enough to crash a plane. 
The investigative file put together by Scotland Yard shows the case began three months ago when two British citizens of Pakistani descent traveled to Pakistan and met with Islamic extremist, perhaps Al-Qaeda, operatives. Following the men led agents to their associates back in the London area. Approximately 20 to 30 young men described as disaffected British nationals, mostly of Pakistani descent. A British undercover agent apparently infiltrated the group. Then, two weeks ago, it became apparent the group was targeting aircraft and the investigation took on new urgency. When investigators became convinced the men had picked their flights and bought battery-powered charging devices to set off their bombs, they moved in. The conception, the large number of people involved, the sophisticated design of the devices that were being considered, the sophisticated nature of the plan all suggests that this group that came together to conspire was very determined and very skilled and very capable. They even planned a dry run of their equipment within a matter of days just to see if they could smuggle the various bottles of explosives they needed through security without being detected. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. During a visit to Green Bay, Wisconsin, President Bush offered assurances about the country's safety, but with a cautionary note. This country is safer than it uh, was prior to 9-11. We've taken a lot of measures to protect the American people, but obviously we're still not completely safe. In response, the U.S. has raised the terror alert level on transatlantic flights from Britain to red, the first time the highest of alerts has ever been used. But as CBS's Bob Orr reports, it's causing a travel nightmare at the nation's airports. At airports from Los Angeles to Newark, Lines were long and tempers were short. I know what your job is. I want you to get to your destination. As passengers and security screeners struggled to cope with some of the tightest restrictions ever ordered for U.S. aviation. For the first time, the Department of Homeland Security raised its terror threat level to red, the highest possible level for flights from the United Kingdom, and to the second highest level, orange, for all other flights, international and domestic. That required big changes in security with no time for notice or preparation. No lotions, nothing liquid. Thousands of passengers were forced to empty their purses, briefcases, and carry-on bags of almost all bottles of liquids and gel. Shampoo, toothpaste, shaving cream, water, and perfume were all dumped at airport checkpoints by frustrated flyers. It's disgusting. I just bought the damn perfume. Security lines inched along and hundreds of flights were delayed as screeners meticulously searched for common everyday household items and toiletries, which terrorists could mix together on board to create a lethal explosive. Security officials stress they have no knowledge of any current imminent threat against any U.S. flight and expressed confidence that the plot to bomb inbound flights from London has been thwarted. But just about every American airport is still crawling with police, SWAT teams, and bomb-sniffing dogs. We in DEFCON Orange today, okay? And to back them up, the governors of at least three states, New York, Massachusetts, and California, have ordered National Guard troops to airport duty. It wasn't this bad at 9-11. I've traveled during 9-11. Many of the delays have started to ease, and many airports now are getting back to some level of normalcy. But the restrictions on liquids and gels and carry-ons will stay in place until U.S. officials are absolutely certain the U.K. threat has been eliminated. Bob Orr, CBS News, Washington. In other news, the pressure is on at the United Nations for a draft resolution for a ceasefire in the Middle East. But as CBS's Karen Brown reports, diplomats are optimistic. I think it's possible that we can have a uh, vote tomorrow, and uh, that's, that's our aspiration, but we need to resolve these issues the right way. The United States is considering a possible compromise that would allow for the Israeli forces to pull out in stages, replaced simultaneously by Lebanese troops and an international peacekeeping force. Despite offering to delay launching a massive new ground offensive to give diplomacy a chance to work, the Israeli army battled guerrilla fighters to push deeper into Lebanon Thursday. And militia rocket fire once again pounded northern Israel, including Haifa, Israel's third largest city, just one day after Hezbollah's leader warned civilians to get out. The Israelis are threatening that if diplomacy doesn't stop the fighting, they will use, quote, all tools to win the war against Hezbollah. Tools like the leaflets that blanketed Beirut, warning residents in the southern suburbs to evacuate because the bombs are coming. Karen Brown for CBS News, the United Nations. 
Just days after BP announced it was shutting down the nation's largest oil field, the oil giant now says it may be able to keep one side open while it makes critical repairs to 16 miles of pipeline. BP says even with just the western side, it can maintain a daily 140,000 barrel capacity. We're back in two minutes. This is CBS News up to the minute. Sell your house today. Call 1-800-PAY-CASH. We buy from anyone, for any reason, in any condition. Repairs, estates, foreclosures, bankruptcies, divorce. Pay no commissions or fees. Call now. 1-800-PAY-CASH. No one is born hating another person for their skin color, religion, or background. Hatred and intolerance are learned. If they can be learned, so can love and tolerance. On the next Judge Alex, she says after she moved in, her landlord made a move on her. He then proceeded to ask me to come into his home. He asked me if I'd ever been with an older man. That's not true. Now, is he flirting with disaster? She would come over and I would be nice and say, you look nice this afternoon. I don't think a 20-year-old attractive <laughs> girl has to go looking at a man who's 35 years older than her for compliments. On the next Judge Alex, today at 9 on 4. Desperate Housewives actress nearly destroying her throat from bulimia. I did open a hole in my esophagus. It's the secret she's kept hidden from Hollywood and her final wake-up call. Then TV's conjoined twins, the emotional new video just moments before their surgical separation. And women who marry cross-dressing men. The new TV series about small-town couples who could be your new neighbors. Next Insider. Tonight at 7.30 on 4. Ready for Dolphins football? Pump it up, baby! Game time! Game time! He is... Me with it! Me with it! And so are we! CBS 4, the only place to catch Dolphin preseason football. The most regular season games anywhere. Plus the best team coverage of everything Dolphin. The Fins meet the Jags, Saturday at 7.30. Is that a problem? He's 35 and he still lives at home. <laughs> and he hadn't moved out yet. Um, but for him, he's kind of got it figured out, you know? No, don't make a straight line crooked, it's going well. Your parents taking care of you, they have a nice house, you can afford things that you otherwise couldn't afford, why would you leave? He's driving a Porsche, for God's sake. He's Kathy Bates is your mom and Terry Bradshaw is your dad. I wouldn't even leave the house. In your early 30s, living at home with mama and daddy, that sends the gals running. When I first read the script, I thought immediately of, of all the great Billy Wilder films. A lot of his films were based on a romance that involved a deceit. Action. Something like a hot Irma LaDuce. Those were films that I, I just, I love. One reason why I was attracted to this script so, so deeply is because I, I see a lot of myself in Ace, because I still live with my parents and they still cook me pancakes every single morning. And my mom never gets it right. Never gets it right. Trip, as long as you're outside. Oh. You live with your parents? Is that a problem? I know people like this, and they believe, the ones I know believe they have it figured out. I love mom, I love dad, they love me. What's not to like? It's great. And I cannot argue with that. But among my friends who are single and do see a lot of single men, I do understand that there is a certain level of immaturity, which is rather stunning. You're not hiring me to trick him, you're hiring me to help him. Tripp lives at home for a purpose, which is I don't want real intimacy, and I use it as the ejection button. When things are getting too close, I'll bring her home to meet my parents. She'll see I live at home, and she'll dump me. He's breaking up with you. What? The only reason he ever brings girls home to meet us is because he's getting ready to dump them. Really? It's frankly a very unlikable thing. Um, <laughs> so that's why you cast really good looking movie stars. Because, you know, nobody cares if they do something a little bit like that because, oh, you know, it, but look at him. Hey. 
He's actually very sexy. Not as sexy as Terry. There's a reason why I was hired for this role. That's, he has to be the father of a sexy man alive. Exactly, and at some point in my life, you have to understand me, I look like that. <laughs> he just has this presence. There's not many of them, man, but he's, he is definitely a movie star. He's not built, though. That's what I'm happy about. I mean, he needs to work out. He really, I keep telling him that he should hit the gym. Sexiest man alive. <laughs> so was being sexy. He's got the looks. <laughs> he's got the charm. Unfortunately. Live with your parents. Matthew McConaughey. Is there a problem? No. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker. He's smart, sweet. He's cute. How cute? Cute. Failure to launch. Available now on pay-per-view. Check your on-screen guide for channels and start times. It's going to take a stick of dynamite to get me out of my parents' house. Failure to launch. Rated PG-13. Did it permanently affect air travel as well? Uh, certainly until a technology is developed which enables airplane screeners, airport screeners, to distinguish between harmful liquids uh, and, and harmless liquids, uh, there's going to be uh, additional uh, burdens placed on both screeners and passengers. So can they detect the, the necessary materials that they were apparently going to use to build these liquid explosive devices? Not, not, not at this time. Uh, there are experimental technologies that are not quite right for prime time. Uh, people have been working on this for a while, uh, close to a decade. It's a very hard scientific nut to crack. Now, if they um, take these liquid devices and they pack them through, they check the bags through, do they pose any threat in that regard? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. If they just use these liquid devices and they put them in their bags and they check them through, is there any threat there or is it just when they're putting them together on board the plane? There are a number of ways that terrorists can put together these kinds of bombs. Uh, it, it looks like in the present case they were planning on taking two relatively inert materials and combining them uh, to form an explosive while in flight. Uh, in the previous uh, attempt to do something like this, back in 1994-95, uh, there was a different approach uh, where the chemical was pre-mixed and was going to be ignited by a spark from a Casio watch battery. That sort of bomb could well work in checked luggage because it would be activated by barometric pressure or, or simply the passage of time. And Steve, real quickly, how long will this heightened security alert be necessary? It will be necessary until, first of all, the British authorities are convinced that they've wrapped up this whole plot. Right now, they seem fairly confident uh, that they've arrested all the conspirators. They won't be absolutely sure uh, uh, for another few days at least. And the problem, of course, with liquid explosives is that now that it's out there, uh, there's a possibility of copycats. Uh, so there will be um, uh, residual caution on that score, which might last for months. All right, Steve Simon, Senior Fellow for the Council on Foreign Relations, thank you so much. Thanks. And we'll be right back. You grip, you turn, you oh. slip, yuck. There must be an easier way to open that can. Introducing the One Touch Can Opener, the fast, easy way to open cans. The One Touch Can Opener is totally automatic. Just place it on the can, press the button, and your can opens in seconds. Amazing. Look, manual can openers take so much twisting and turning, it can be almost impossible to open a can. But with the One Touch Can Opener, you just touch and go. It's that easy. Best of all, it works on any size can, small, medium, or large. Nothing is easier than the One Touch Can Opener. Watch out. With ordinary can openers, that lid is sharp enough to slice your finger. But the One Touch cuts from the side, so there's no sharp edges, and the lid can never fall in. You'll never have to dig that dusty, germ-filled lid out of your food again. 
Leftover pet food? The lid pops right back on the can to store in the refrigerator. That saves you money. My arthritis actually made it painful for me. But with the one-touch can opener, I can push a button and the can is open for me. Move over bulky can openers and say hello to counter space. Just press and go. Nothing is faster or easier. The one-touch can opener really will be the last can opener you'll ever have to buy. Now on this special TV offer, get the one-touch can opener for the breakthrough price of just $19.95 with a money-back guarantee. If the one-touch isn't the easiest can opener you've ever used, just return it for a full refund. Call right now and we'll also include the Gripmate, absolutely free. It's perfect for every hard-to-open jar or bottle. Just grip, twist, and pop. Stop struggling with those other can openers. Get the one-touch can opener and touch and go forever. Here's how to order. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-677-9061 to order the one-touch can opener for just $19.95 plus shipping and handling. That number again is 1-800-677-9061. So don't delay. Order your one-touch can opener today by calling 1-800-677-9061. Call now. The transatlantic terror plot was foiled. Suspects have been arrested, and the international investigation is continuing. But there's much more to the story. Tonight, the fallout. We'll look at those new security rules and how they will affect millions of airline travelers here at home. See why more people are watching the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. The president of Iran. Is he as scary as he sounds? Find out when he sits down with Mike Wallace for a rare interview, Sunday on 60 Minutes. The CBS Evening News with Katie Couric begins September 5th. It's 19 past the hour. Top stories and up to the minute. U.S. law enforcement says British police have recovered at least one martyrdom tape at the home of one of the suspects in the alleged plot to blow up airliners bound for the U.S. The threat has prompted new travel restrictions for air passengers. Among other changes, most liquids, including shampoo and perfume, have been banned from carry-on bags. And the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi is warning that Indian cities could be targeted by terrorists. California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger activated the National Guard to help bolster security at the state's larger airports. Los Angeles is said to be one of the cities to which the alleged bombers were trying to fly so they could blow up the airplane en route. Manuel Gallegas reports. At LA's International Airport, long lines to check in, longer lines to get bags screened, and even longer ones to get through security. Travelers were frustrated. It's just kind of ridiculous. It's not very good communication, so we don't really know where to go. The code red terror alert issued for flights from London to the U.S. had a ripple effect across the board. Airports all look the same, crowded. I think it's blown out of proportion, personally. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they had something in Britain, and now they're jumping off the deep end again, and here we go. Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez says get used to it. We are a nation at war. Today's actions are a stark reminder that, that the threat is real. Here at British Airways, they have three flights a day from Los Angeles to London. In the summer, the lines are always long, but today, a lot of passengers were caught off guard. Passengers headed for London were given Ziploc bags for their most important possessions, like passports and keys. No more personal bags on board. No more computers or cell phones either. They even told me to like, dump my uh, credit cards and my money in here and put the wallet in here, but it's too much of an inconvenience, so I just stuck my wallet in there. <laughs> And for all flights, foreign or domestic, no more liquids or gels allowed. No toothpaste, lipstick, perfume, or saline solution. A costly hassle for those who had already checked their luggage when the rules suddenly changed. It's unclear just how long the restrictions will last, but the best advice for traveling may be what we've always heard, pack light. Manuel Gallegas, CBS News, Los Angeles. On the CBS News Money Watch, Japan's Nikkei index ended Friday trading slightly lower, closing down 65 points to finish at 15,565. Alexis Christopher says more on what's ahead for Wall Street. Oil and airline stocks will be front and center on Wall Street today. They took a hit Thursday once news of the thwarted terrorist plot broke. But Wall Street overall showed its resilience. The Dow climbed 48 points while the Nasdaq rose 11. Concerns that new terror fears could hurt the airline industry just as it mounts a turnaround sent airline stocks south. But shares regained ground as experts said the effects should only be temporary and that passengers will likely return to the skies soon. 
Still, any drop in air travel demand could lead to fewer flights and weaker demand for jet fuel. That scenario sent oil prices plummeting, with crude down more than $2 a barrel. And with security heightened at airports on both sides of the Atlantic, investors ran to buy up shares of security technology and defense companies. We'll find out if record gas prices kept shoppers at home when we get a report later today on July retail sales. And it just got cheaper to finance the American dream. Mortgage rates fell for the third straight week. The average rate on a 30-year fixed loan, 6.55% down from 6.63% last week. The rate on a 15-year mortgage fell to 6.2%. That's your Money Watch. Click on cbsnews.com for more. In New York, I'm Alexis Christophorus. Here's a look at your weather for this Friday. The latest satellite picture shows clouds over the desert southwest, some producing monsoon rains for portions of Arizona. More clouds are found across the nation's midsection and mid-Atlantic states into the southeast. The southern plains and the west coast is nice and clear. Later today, the southern plains and west will see plenty of summer sunshine, while thunderstorms will continue to bring flooding rains to portions of the southwest. The central plains and southeast will also see storms while it will be nice in the northeast. In sports, if you were looking for extra bases Thursday, you should have gone to Kansas City because Boston Red Sox pitcher Kurt Schilling was giving them away. The six-time All-Star gave up 10 extra base hits as the Royals rallied toward a 5-4 win. The Royals, with the worst record in baseball, swept the Sox in three games. Things weren't much better for Red starter Bronson Arroyo. The visiting Cardinals lit him up for three home runs, including the Scott Spezio two-run shot in the fifth to make it 5 nothing cards. Chris Duncan had two homers as the Cardinals ran off to a 6-1 to win. And what a night for the Indians' Ryan Garko. After hitting a bases-clearing double in the fourth inning against the Angels, Garko hit his first major league home run in the sixth, putting the Tribe up 13-2. to The Indians won the game 14-2. Ryan Garko is first major league home run. you need a green card, this is Lauren Kaiser, attorney at law. If you applied for a green card and were denied, we may obtain an approval. If you're under deportation, we may be able to stop it. We offer a free consultation. Find out if you are eligible to legally work, travel, and obtain a driver's license. We provide prompt professional services in all immigration matters. Remember, we are here to help. Call AIC for your free consultation, 800-520-3303. You got the barn, the big red barn. Since 1965, Better Barn offers the lowest discount prices on the highest quality merchandise and the best customer service. Buy our therapy to queen size set for the price of their full. Just $399.88. That low discount price includes our famous eight-piece linen package. Show them, darling. Two spring-made foam fiber queen size pillows, mattress pad, 400 thread count, 100% cotton satin sheets and matching pillowcases, plus your choice of a warm soda comforter or designer blanket. Over $250 worth of the finest quality the merchandise at no extra charge. Stop wasting time and gas searching for the imitators. Betty Barn is the discount originator. Nobody but nobody beats the big red barn. Remember, Betty Barn has the largest selection of the world famous Tempur Pedic and the lowest discount prices. You gotta feel it to believe it. Happy anniversary, Betty Barn. Yeehaw! Take it home with you or same day delivery available. Buy the Betty Barn near you. In Florida, Davie, Tamarack, Deerfield Beach, Boynton Beach, and West Palm Beach. Our pan pizza is square because of Papa John's. We don't cut quarters. Try Papa John's perfect pan pizza with a zesty Robusto sauce and a thick golden crust made deep and square to pile on the toppings. Call now or order online and get a large pan pizza with up to five toppings for just $12.99. $12.99. Better ingredients, better pizza, and now a better pan. Papa John's. That's the way I For the first time since its creation, just after the September 11th attacks, the Department of Homeland Security raised the threat level to red for incoming flights from Great Britain. Once again, anxiety is on the rise among airline passengers after this latest terror plot. 
Five years after 9-11, it seems the same drill is unfolding, from long lines at security and tighter restrictions to an increased level of fear. CBS's Kelly Cobiea has more on the impact. Michelle Provost wasn't even flying, but she was still worried. We're worried. Our little 14-year-old niece that's coming in, she has had flight anxiety and uh, that she's in the midst of this today. So hopefully her mom's shielding her from whatever is going on. It was hard to avoid. Overnight, the basics from medicine cabinets and makeup bags Gotta do it before I have to put it away. were treated like potential tools of terrorists. Even so, for some people, the scariest part was traveling without the essentials. Ellen Katz and her daughters were headed to the beach. I'm more anxious about waiting in this line with a five and a three-year-old than anything else. But I guess, I guess we're going to be more secure today maybe than we were yesterday, so that's what we're hoping. But underneath all those brave faces was a familiar sense of unease. And maybe we weren't supposed to let down our, our guard. Does this shake the faith of people? Certainly it does. Unfortunately it does, but in, in shaking a person's faith, uh, it actually may mean reestablishing it upon firmer foundations. Texas pastor Andy McQuitty sees it in his congregation with every reminder of 9-11. There are all sorts of collateral damages that are done in this world by the actions and choices of evil people. And we have to live in this world plowing through the wake of that evil. The provost family's hugs lasted a little longer celebration for a trip that almost didn't happen. I can't believe I'm crying, but it was emotional. Because at some point you're thinking, like, should I put them on the plane? But we're here and I'm just tired. Tired more than anything of having to be afraid again. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Dallas. Thank you for joining us this half hour. Stay with CBS for the latest on the terror plot and its impact here in the United States. This is Up to the Minute. For news 24 hours a day, log on to cbsnews.com. CBS 4 News is always on CBS4.com. Good morning. It's Friday, August 11th from CBS News in New York City. I'm Meg Oliver. Here's what's happening. British officials say the suspected terror plot they disrupted was in the final stages. News for Friday, August 11th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Susan McGinnis. More arrests are expected in the alleged plot against airliners flying from Britain to the United States. So far, 24 men are under arrest, most of them British Muslims. British authorities say the suspects were planning to act within days. Randall Pinkston is live in London with the latest. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Susan. Minutes ago, Pakistani authorities announced the arrest of five people described as facilitators for two men believed to be connected to the transatlantic terror plot. Now, it's unclear if these are the only remaining suspects or whether some of the other plotters are still on the run. The coordinated plan had all the earmarks of al-Qaeda, which has deep roots in Pakistan, and apparently so do some of the suspects arrested in England. The 24 suspects under arrest lived in suburban communities in London and other cities, ranging in age from 17 to 35. Neighbors say they didn't have a clue. One of the suspects reportedly worked at Heathrow and had a security pass. Overnight, the Bank of England announced its freezing assets belonging to 19 of the suspects. Most of them have Muslim names that are common in Pakistan. U.S. intelligence sources say British officials also found a martyr tape often used by suicide bombers. In the U.S. and England, police and bomb-sniffing dogs continue to patrol airports. And this morning in Pakistan, high-ranking officials revealed that two British nationals of Pakistani ancestry were arrested there last week and may have provided key information about the plot. The plan was to use liquid explosives which would pass undetected through x-ray machines, raising no alarms, circumventing airline security. 
We think this was an extraordinarily serious plot and we are confident we've prevented uh, an attempt to commit mass, mass murder, as I've said, on an unimaginable scale. British authorities, quickly joined by the U.S. Office of Homeland Security, issued restrictive baggage rules. Passengers can no longer take carry-ons, banning liquids, gels, cell phones, anything that might be mixed on board to cause an explosion. The sophisticated design of the devices that were being considered, the sophisticated nature of the plan all suggests that this group that came together to conspire was very determined and very skilled and very capable. With the new regulations in place, airports remain crowded but not chaotic and passengers are coping. What do you think about the new security measures? <clears throat> I think we're very lucky that they've caught these people. I really do. So whatever we have to put up with, we just have to put up with. This morning, the threat level in England remains critical, the highest level. While British authorities say they've rounded up the ringleaders, there may be other suspects and there's concern that there may be parallel plots aimed at targets other than the airlines. Susan? Yeah, Randall, with this plot foiled, just how worried are the Brits about the next one? Well, it's a constant job, and it's very dependent on intelligence. As a, a counterterrorism experts say, they have to be lucky all the time. The, sub, the plotters only have to be lucky once. All right, Randall, thank you. Randall Pinkston in London. There is a new warning of another possible terrorist operation in India. U.S. citizens have been alerted by the American embassy, which says foreign nationals plan to attack two major cities with bombs. In an email to Americans, the embassy says the attacks are planned on or before India's Independence Day, and that is this Tuesday. In this country, airline security has been tightened. There are tougher passenger inspections and restrictions on carry-on luggage. For airline passengers, it means a test of patience. Bob Orr reports. At airports from Los Angeles to Newark, lines were long and tempers were short. I know what your job is. I want you to get I your destination. Your job As passengers and security screeners struggled to cope with some of the tightest restrictions ever ordered for U.S. aviation. For the first time, the Department of Homeland Security raised its terror threat level to red, the highest possible level for flights from the United Kingdom, and to the second highest level, orange, for all other flights, international and domestic. That required big changes in security with no time for notice or preparation. No lotions, nothing liquid. Thousands of passengers were forced to empty their purses, briefcases, and carry-on bags of almost all bottles of liquids and gels. Shampoo, toothpaste, shaving cream, water and perfume were all dumped at airport checkpoints by frustrated flyers. It's disgusting, I just bought the damn perfume. Security lines inched along and hundreds of flights were delayed as screeners meticulously searched for common everyday household items and toiletries, which terrorists could mix together on board to create a lethal explosive. Security officials stress they have no knowledge of any current imminent threat against any U.S. flight and expressed confidence that the plot to bomb inbound flights from London has been thwarted. But just about every American airport is still crawling with police, SWAT teams, and bomb-sniffing dogs. We in DEPCON Orange today, okay? And to back them up, the governors of at least three states, New York, Massachusetts, and California, have ordered National Guard troops to airport duty. It wasn't this bad at 9-11. I've traveled during 9-11. Many of the delays have started to ease, and many airports now are getting back to some level of normalcy. But the restrictions on liquids and gels and carry-ons will stay in place until U.S. officials are absolutely certain the U.K. threat has been eliminated. Bob Orr, CBS News, Washington. At this point, al-Qaeda has not said that it was behind the plot, but as we said, officials say it does bear the hallmark of the terrorist organization. In fact, it's quite similar to a plot hatched nearly a dozen years ago. David Martin reports. The year was 1995, the place Manila, and the plot, at first glance, identical to the one in Britain. Blow up in midair as many as a dozen international airliners bound for the U.S. But there was one key difference. In Manila, the terrorists mixed their explosives ahead of time and conducted a test run by planting one small bomb under a seat aboard this Philippine airliner. It didn't bring down the plane, but it did kill one passenger and injured several others. But when they mixed another batch of explosives in this apartment building, a fire broke out and gave them away. In Britain, the terrorists planned to avoid that pitfall by mixing their explosives after they boarded the aircraft. 
In this case, they were going to assemble the device on board the aircraft. It appears as though the explosives, timers, and other things will be actually pulled together there. That change in tactics shows why no one should take comfort from the fact this latest plot was disrupted. Terrorists learn from their mistakes. What's bothersome about it is that it failed in 95. Al-Qaeda has a tremendous memory and tries to come back and make mistakes good. And you wonder if they weren't just trying to come back and say, listen, we missed the first time, but we got you this time. One of the key figures in the Manila plot was the now notorious Khalid Sheikh Mohammed who learned a lesson which was to change the world. Using explosives was too risky. A year later, when he met with bin Laden in Afghanistan, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed proposed a different way of using planes to cause mass casualties, crash them into buildings in the U.S., a threat which was all but ignored until after the U.S. learned its own lesson on 9-11. David Martin, CBS News, The Pentagon. Just ahead on the morning news, the latest fighting in Lebanon. Israel continues its airstrikes around Beirut as diplomats keep working on a ceasefire plan. First, Harry Smith with a preview of tonight's CBS Evening News. Tonight, we'll look at how the foiled plot to bomb transatlantic flights will affect airlines and travel in the coming days and months. Tonight's CBS Evening News. There's the right tool for every job and there's the right place to find the right tools. Sears. Right now, during the Craftsman Anniversary Sale, all Craftsman cordless drills are on sale, and all Craftsman Mechanics tool sets are 20% off, like this 155-piece set, just $99.99. If you've got a project, we've got America's number one tool brand during the Craftsman Anniversary Sale, this week at Sears. If you love biscuits, Hot Pockets brings all your breakfast favorites together in a delicious, tender biscuit crust. Hot Pockets brand Hearty Breakfast Biscuits, filled with savory bacon, egg, and cheese. Hearty Breakfast Biscuits from Hot Pockets. So we're browning the beef, add stock, and when you're done, voila! New Meow Mix Market Select. Meow Mix Market Select. With tender, juicy cuts of fresh meats and seafood, it's too good to put in a can. Thick, heavy makeup? Not for these cover girls. New True Blend Wit Foundation feels light as silk. It covers so naturally, what you see and feel is you. It's true. This luxurious, light as silk formula blends right in. It matches 97% of skin tones. It's the new touch of luxury. So light, so true, and yet, so you. New True Blend Wit Foundation. Because babies communicate through touch. New Pamper Sensitive Wipes with a touch of milk essentials. Condition your baby's skin every time you use them. New Pamper Sensitive Wipes. Because every touch means so much. There may be a vote as early as today on a U.N. resolution for a ceasefire in Lebanon and Israel. Meantime, the battle rages on. Israeli warplanes struck Hezbollah targets again today across southern Lebanon, killing at least 11 people. And one Israeli soldier was killed during a clash with Hezbollah militants in a Lebanese village. There is a hint that Fidel Castro's condition may be quite serious. Venezuela's president, Hugo Chavez, said Thursday that Castro is in a, quote, great battle for life. Castro had intestinal surgery two weeks ago and temporarily turned over power in Cuba to his brother. There's been no new information on his condition. Oil giant BP may not have to turn off all the spigots at Prudhoe Bay after all. The company said it may keep part of the Alaskan oil field open while it repairs miles of corroded pipelines. On a normal day, 400,000 barrels of oil are pumped out. As of Thursday, 140,000 barrels were still flowing out of the biggest U.S. oil field. On the CBS Money Watch, Wall Street was resilient in the face of the British terror plot. Alexis Christophers has the details and the numbers. 
Oil and airline stocks will be front and center on Wall Street today. They took a hit Thursday once news of the thwarted terrorist plot broke. But Wall Street overall showed its resilience. The Dow Industrials rose 48 points. The Nasdaq climbed 11. Concerns that new terror fears could hurt the airline industry just as it mounts a turnaround sent airline stocks south. But shares regained ground as experts said the effects should only be temporary and that passengers will likely return to the skies soon. Still, any drop in air travel demand could lead to fewer flights and weaker demand for jet fuel. That scenario sent oil prices plummeting crude down more than $2 a barrel. And with security heightened at airports on both sides of the Atlantic, investors ran to buy up shares of security, technology and defense companies. We'll find out if record gas prices kept shoppers at home when we get a report later today on July retail sales. And it just got cheaper to finance the American dream. Mortgage rates fell for the third straight week. The average rate on a 30-year fixed loan is at 6.55%, down from 6.63% last week. The rate on a 15-year mortgage fell to 6.2%. And that's your Money Watch. In New York, I'm Alexis Christophorus. Still to come, your Friday morning weather. And in sports, Mark Grudzelanik and the Royals try to hang on and sweep the Red Sox. Money Watch, sponsored by Capital One. What's in your wallet? As you can see on my chart here, sales have exceeded... What is that? Small business owner. They come in looking for loans. But we only care about big business. Quarter. Our cash... Whoa. Our, our cash... Do they normally catch on fire like that? <laughs> yeah, let's get some lunch. Does your bank think small about your small business? Call Capital One instead for no-hassle business loans, lines of credit, and credit cards. Hello, Capital One. What's in your wallet? Oh, I want a loan. I want a loan. <laughs> Having a kid with allergies is hard. Giving them their medicine is even harder. Children's Benadryl Allergy Fast Melt. No spills, no mess. Effective relief in a quick dissolving tablet. Benadryl Fast Melt. Allergy relief just got easier to take. Want the secret to healthy skin? It's just below the surface. Introducing the newest Lubriderm Skin Nourishing Lotion with natural sea kelp extract. It helps dry skin absorb and retain moisture, so it's naturally healthy. New Lubriderm Skin Nourishing Lotion with sea kelp extract. My attitude is I am a, a 61 year young woman with diabetes. From my head to my shoes. I found a better attitude when it comes to eating. New One Touch Ultra 2 with before and after meal averages can help you see how food affects your blood sugar. I can enjoy food again. I've got a new attitude. Under control. One Touch changes everything. Yeah. Here's a look at today's weather for some cities around the country. In New York, mostly sunny, 80 degrees. In Miami, a thunderstorm or two, high of 93. Chicago, mostly sunny, 79. Denver, sunny and 93. L.A., 86. Nebraska gets a shot of severe weather. Winds clocked up to 110 miles per hour caused major damage at a raceway between Omaha and Lincoln. Trailers were knocked over and debris was thrown all over the field. Officials say it'll take days to clean it all up. Time now to check on your national forecast. This morning, satellite pictures show clouds and scattered thunderstorms over the desert southwest. There are also clouds from the middle of the country to the mid-Atlantic states, while showers and thunderstorms hit the southwest. Later today, the west coast and southern plains will see plenty of sun, while parts of the southwest will have thunderstorms with some flooding rains. Scattered storms will develop from the central plains to the southeast, but the northeast will have a perfect finish to the work week. In sports, Roger Clemens has now won 345 career games. Clemens allowed just one run and four hits in six innings against the Pirates on Thursday. Morgan Ensberg hit a three-run homer as Houston beat Pittsburgh 5-2 to two to wrap up a three-game sweep for the Astros. The Dodgers now lead the National League West. L.A. took over the division lead with a 4-3 win over Colorado. Kenny Lofton drove in the winning run in the bottom of the ninth. It was the Dodgers' 12th win in 13 games. In Kansas City, the Royals finished a three-game sweep of the Red Sox. KC scored three runs off Curt Schilling in the eighth inning to beat the Sox 5-4. This was Boston's fifth loss in a row. 
And it's time for preseason football. New Indianapolis kicker Adam Vinatieri surprised St. Louis with a successful onside kick to start the game on Thursday. Peyton Manning connected for two Colts touchdown passes, but the Rams won the game 19-17. When we come back, another look at this morning's top stories. New airport rules mean it will not be an easy getaway for thousands of weekend travelers. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Sponsored in part by The Pharmacy at Walmart. Take the worry out of getting prescriptions so you can get out and really enjoy life. Wanted leftovers. The scrubbing power of Cascade meets the grease fighting power of Dawn. Cascade two in one action packs, so even sticky foods won't stick. Cascade two in one action packs. Dishwashing that's truly automatic. Hey, I'm Freddy, a flushable, moist white. Hey, Henry, and so we're made for the way kids, you know, go. Goodbye, tricky, tangly toilet paper. Easier, honey? Yeah. Hey, I'm pumped. This is fun. Honey's clean, too. For kid-friendly bathrooms everywhere. Honey's clean, too. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Are we in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. Uh, you know, I got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. <laughs> That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. Our pan pizza is square because of Papa John's. We don't cut corners. Try Papa John's perfect pan pizza with a zesty Robusto sauce and a thick golden crust made deep and square to pile on the toppings. Call now or order online and get a large pan pizza with up to five toppings for just $12.99. $12.99. Better ingredients, better pizza, and now a better pan. Papa John's. On the CBS Morning News, here's a look at today's weather. Expect monsoon rains in parts of the desert southwest, but sunshine along the west coast. Scattered showers will hit the middle of the country, but it is picture perfect in the northeast. Here's another look at this morning's top stories. 24 suspects in Britain have been arrested in the alleged plot against U.S.-bound airliners. Five more were arrested today in Pakistan. Officials believe they were only days away from launching attacks. They had accumulated and assembled the capabilities that they needed, and they were in the uh, final stages of planning before execution. It's believed they plan to detonate chemical-based bombs on up to 10 planes. Well, for travelers, it means some of the strictest security yet. There are long lines, canceled flights, and severe restrictions for carry-on luggage. People have to pack their liquids or throw them away. Well, in the years since 9-11, Americans have become too familiar with tighter security restrictions at airports. Removing our shoes is now standard procedure. And yet, this plot seems to have made our travel troubles seem that much worse. Kelly Cobiella reports. Michelle Provost wasn't even flying, but she was still worried. We're worried. Our little 14-year-old niece that's coming in, she has had flight anxiety and uh, that she's in the midst of this today. So hopefully her mom's shielding her from whatever is going on. It was hard to avoid. Overnight, the basics from medicine cabinets and makeup bags Gotta do it before I have to put it away. were treated like potential tools of terrorists. Even so, for some people, the scariest part was traveling without the essentials. Ellen Katz and her daughters were headed to the beach. I'm more anxious about waiting in this line with a five and a three-year-old than anything else. But I guess, I guess we're going to be more secure today maybe than we were yesterday, so that's what we're hoping. But underneath all those brave faces was a familiar sense of unease. And maybe we weren't supposed to let down our, our guard. Does this shake the faith of people? It certainly does. 
Unfortunately, it does. But in, in shaking a person's faith, uh, it actually may mean reestablishing it upon firmer foundations. Texas pastor Andy McQuitty sees it in his congregation with every reminder of 9-11. There are all sorts of collateral damages that are done in this world by the actions and choices of evil people. And we have to live in this world plowing through the wake of that evil. The provost family's hugs lasted a little longer celebration for a trip that almost didn't happen. I can't believe I'm crying, but it was emotional. Because at some point you're thinking, like, should I put them on the plane? But we're here and I'm just tired. Tired more than anything of having to be afraid again. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Dallas. This morning on The Early Show, much more on the terror arrests and their impact on travel in this country. I'm Susan McGinnis. This is the CBS Morning News. Everyday carpet cleaning used to mean hassling with a vacuum. Now it means the Swiffer Carpet Flick. It's easy to use, lightweight, cordless, and it fits into tight spaces easier than a vacuum. Just flick, trap, and toss. Swiffer gives cleaning a whole new meaning. Hey. Hey. Oh, I like your jeans. Thanks. Smile. All boys and girls jeans on sale. No one gets back to school like Kmart. Some shrimp, we've seared our tuna, and when you're done, voila, new Meow Mix Market Select. Meow Mix Market Select. With tender, juicy cuts of fresh meats and seafood, it's too good to put in a can. Sell your house today. Call 1-800-PAY-CASH. We buy from anyone, for any reason, in any condition. Repairs, estates, foreclosures, bankruptcies, divorce. Pay no commissions or fees. Call now. 1-800-PAY-CASH. South Florida is talking about CBS 4 News. I turn to them first for my news. CBS 4 News does a good job of balanced coverage. More details, more pictures, more explanations. CBS 4 News informs me of everything. When there's breaking news, that's the first thing I do is turn on Channel 4. I can tune in at any time and find out everything that's going on locally, weather-wise, traffic-wise. They really have a heartbeat for what goes on in South Florida. For the news you need now, turn to South Florida CBS 4 News. There are rumors going around that if you watch my new daytime talk show, you'll get magical powers. <laughs> but those rumors are silly. True, but silly. The Megan Mullally Show, coming to CBS 4 September 18th, weekday mornings at 9. Well, U.S. policy in the Middle East comes under frequent attack from the president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The outspoken president has called for an end to Israel, rattled the world with threats of nuclear proliferation, and called for an Islamic re revolution. 60 Minutes correspondent Mike Wallace had a chance to talk with Iran's president. The problem that President Bush has that in his mind he wants to solve everything with bombs. And he believes that his power emanates from his nuclear warhead arsenals. The time of the bomb is in the past. It's behind us. Today is the era of thoughts, dialogue, and cultural exchanges. You have a special unit of martyr seekers in your Revolutionary Guard. They claim they have 52,000 trained suicide bombers ready to attack American and British targets if America should attack Iran. This is unfortunate. You are thinking about the bomb as well. Uh, I'm thinking about reality. I've asked the question, do you have... Well, yes, I'm talking about the reality as well. Uh, and uh, your uh, thoughts have been put on paper, as I see. Oh, of course. So, are you expecting the Americans to threaten us and we sit idly by and watch them? 
with our hands and, and tied. have Americans oh, threatened you? We have, we have a long civilization, a very uh, ancient civilization and culture. And also we believe in talking, we believe in dialogue and thinking. And you can see the entire interview on 60 Minutes this Sunday night at 7, 6 Central Time on CBS. And that's the CBS Morning News for this Friday. Thanks for being here with us. We hope you'll join us later for the early show. I'm Susan McGinnis. Have a great weekend. Terror plot. Target the U.S. Get the latest on overnight developments. And if you're still planning a summer vacation, find out what this means to your travel plans. Coming up on the early show. CBS kicks off the NFL preseason with two of the league's toughest teams. New England collides with Atlanta. Football tonight on CBS. Judge Alex rules. Weekday mornings at 9 on CBS. Good morning to you, South Florida. Good to be with you as always this morning. I'm Danielle Knox. And I'm George Estevez. We have a lot, of, lot to cover this morning, so let's get right to the stories we're working on. All right, first up for you this morning, we have some new information in that foiled London terror plot. Officials have released the names of the two dozen suspects, including a teenager. And a new threat this morning, warnings to Americans living in India. What officials there say about another plan to carry out attacks. And with all those extra checkpoints at airports right now, passengers in South Florida are in for a long wait today. We have live team coverage with new information throughout this morning. Convicted in under an hour. Only on four, hear from the jury four woman who helped send a rapist to prison. And will he take the field in the Dolphins' preseason debut? The decision on quarterback Dante Culpepper. Get your news and get out the door right now with half the commercials. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News This Morning. Coming up on 5 a.m. Friday, August 11th, lots going on this morning. Danielle Absolutely. Knox, back from her week of vacation. Absolutely, a lot of fun, a lot of fun during the week. I know there was a lot of news happening here, though, while I was gone, so we do have a very busy day of news ahead this morning. But before we get started with that, let's see what it's going to be like when you head out the door this morning. Let's start with Pamela Wright with her first forecast of the morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we do find temperatures this morning, a lot of 70s on the map, and that's been the case over the last few days. Nice little cool downs overnight. Okay, not cool, but you know what I mean. Not in the mid 80s anyway. 80 degrees Miami at the airport, 75 in Homestead and West Kendall, 79 in Pembroke Pines. What about the radar and satellite picture? We had a few spotty inland thunderstorms as expected yesterday. Today? barely even finding that. We are in an unseasonably dry situation around here. Not a complaint, but a fact, and also one that will allow temperatures to stay quite hot into the upcoming weekend. Want to show you the water vapor and just all the reds, the dry air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So not even many clouds to get you going today. Strong sunshine, 93 the high. Um, that's sort of a good average medium high. We could even find mid to upper 90s over the weekend if you are well inland. A very slim thunderstorm chance. We'll talk about your weekend and the tropics coming up. See you in a little while.
At 501, let's go ahead and talk about the roadways. Mark Tyler Henry, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Danielle. Welcome back. Taking a look outside. Pretty quiet out there right now. Not a whole lot going on. 95 north and southbound around Griffin Road. So you got a pretty easy ride out there. Also taking a look at the Dolphin Expressway eastbound and westbound into and out of Miami. They've got a real smooth commute. This traffic report brought to you by Pollo Tropical. I'm Mark Henry, CBS 4 News Traffic Control. Our top story this morning, security lines longer, terrorist fears stronger. This morning, new details about the suspects and a new warning to tell you about. Just one day after news of a foiled terror plot sent shockwaves all around the world, Americans in India right now are being warned of another attack in the making. And that news comes along with word now that officials have now released the names of the suspects arrested in London. CBS 4's Yusila Ramirez is here now gathering all the details for us. Yusila, good morning. Well, we know that investigators have the names. They're set to release them, though, to news agencies later on today. What we also have new this morning is that the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi has warned that foreign militants, possibly Al-Qaeda members, may be planning to carry out bombings in India's two major cities of New Delhi and Bombay in the coming days. This morning, two dozen people are in custody, all of them linked to this terror plot, and officials promise there are more arrests to come. A search of their homes has turned up at least one videotape with messages that could be considered a video suicide note. All of the suspects arrested were British nationals, many of Pakistani descent. Today, investigators are expected to release the names of most of those taken into custody. The Bank of England froze the assets of 19 people early Friday, and here's what we know so far. The oldest person is 35, the youngest 17. Neighbors of the suspects are reacting with surprise. He was a very polite young man. I've known him from the day he was born. His parents are very nice people. He's never given us any problem. He's always been very polite and well-mannered. British authorities have been working the case for about two weeks following several arrests in Pakistan. British Prime Minister Tony Blair first briefed President Bush on the plot in a video conference over the weekend. After the situation was made public, the president spoke to the nation. We live in a dangerous world, but our government will do everything we can to protect our people from those dangers. Members of South Florida's Terrorism Task Force were briefed on the plot early Thursday morning. We were notified in the early hours of the morning that this was taking place in Great Britain. Uh, obviously, the first question that we ask is, is there a connection to South Florida? Is there a danger to the community here? In this case, fortunately, there was not. So the reports that were out there that perhaps one of the jets to be commandeered was going to be a Miami-bound flight, untrue at this point. We have no information that there are any connections to the South Florida community. Intelligence officials say the terrorists had a dry run planned for Saturday. If they were successful on sneaking liquid explosives through security, they plan to commence their attacks days later on nine or ten U.S. bound flights from Heathrow. The airlines, British Airways, American, Continental and United. Put simply, this was intended to be mass murder on an unimaginable scale. Authorities say once aboard, the terrorists would mix the liquid explosive with a gel-like substance, then ignite it using a cell phone or music player. As a result, all liquid, gels, cell phones, iPods, and other electronics have been banned from carry-on luggage, leaving London. Here is what else we know.